So Google Gemini is in the news again, and it's not for a good reason. Google Gemini has two controversies. The first is the exclusion of <laughs> Caucasian people within its photo generated results. And this has caused some backlash saying that Gemini is very woke, but that is nothing compared to this recent controversy. There's a video going around on TikTok of a user who is using Gemini. They ask Gemini about some actions that I really can't say on YouTube, but it has to do with children. So I'll just leave it at that. And Gemini seemed to be very evasive regarding its answer, which led to a lot of reports saying that it's condoning this particular heinous action against children. And this actually highlights a huge problem that I don't think companies are aware of when they start to tackle AI and bring it into our lives. First things first, I don't know how something like this gets past not only the programmers, but the testers, beta testers, and everyone else at Google. It's their job to ensure that the responses for the AI are one, unbiased, and that is going to be a potential problem I will get to later. And two, does not convince users to commit any sort of heinous acts. The bias issue comes from whoever is programming the AI. There's been reports saying that black people are going to be disproportionately affected by AI because the programmers who are inputting the data for the AI to use are not black. But there is some truth in that concern. And that is because we do not know who's programming these AIs, these AIs are just going to take the knowledge that their programmer gives them. And if their programmer is leaning one way politically, then you can rest assured that the AI is going to be more towards whatever side of the aisle its creator is on. There's really no way to counter this. You can hire a whole bunch of people with different points of view, different experiences, but that is not going to work because one, that's going to lead to a large cost. And as we've seen before, when companies incur large cost, then they want to cut back. And the way they cut back is layoffs. So what could Google and other companies who are looking to incorporate generative AI into their products do in order to prevent these type of situations from happening? One, you have to do the thorough testing. You have to ask the AI these uncomfortable questions in order to gauge its responses. And that way you can solve that issue in-house rather than have a user ask one of those uncomfortable questions and the AI doesn't respond in the way that the user is expecting. This can only happen if the testers have enough time to really test the AI models and as we know, these companies love to move fast. So it's going to be up to them really, and that's the unfortunate part. It's gonna be up to them in order to gauge the speed at which they're developing these generative AI tools. I don't think that this is going to be the last issue that we hear when it comes to generative AI. Likely that Google will have another scandal. Apple is apparently going to incorporate generative AI in iOS 18. If there is a response that's controversial, you know that Apple is going to be in not only the tech news, but the mainstream news. It's going to be everywhere similar to Google, but because it's Apple, there's going to be a lot more eyes on it. But let me know what you think. Do you think these Google Gemini controversies are blown out of proportion? Do you think that these companies are rushing to develop these AI tools without first considering the types of users that will interact with that product? Let me know what you think and consider subscribing if you are new. 
And until next time, I will see you in the next video. Take care.